Why did Hamas attack and who gains from the war between the Palestinians and Israel? Before we get into it, I want to thank everybody for liking, subscribing, and following. If you have not done that yet, make sure that you do it. This is a great opportunity to uh, make sure that the algorithm doesn't stop you from seeing the things that you want to see. So why did Hamas attack now? And who gains from a war between the Palestinians and Israel? We have to actually start in the Middle East, and the reason we have to start there is because there's currently some peace negotiations going on between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Uh, the Abraham Accords, people probably have heard about, they were the beginning of the normalization of relations between Israel and uh, the, United Arab, Arab, em, the United Arab Emirates and uh, Bahrain. You know, both the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain recognizes Israel's sovereignty uh, and established full diplomatic relations with this Jewish state. You know, this could now this couldn't make shut up phone. This couldn't make the Muslim world, uh, the, the radical Muslim world any unhappier. Now, Israel and Morocco have already signed a normalization agreement, which means that <clears throat> recognition, formal recognition, isn't far off. Saudi Arabia began to initiate normalization processes with Israel, uh, I think back in September of 2020. So this is something that has been ongoing for a while now. Uh, you know, this attack will undoubtedly uh, disrupt the unfolding peace process uh, that uh, was slowly taking effect between uh, the Jewish state and the Muslim world. You know, um, if we reach back all the way to the abrupt withdrawal of U.S. forces in Afghanistan, uh, the U.S. government allowed Iran to sell its petroleum into the international markets. Uh, and this is bad. This is not good because we've always been able to control terrorism throughout the world by keeping um, <clears throat> Iran from being able to make money. You know, Iran has become increasingly more brazen uh, in pursuing its disruptive and uh, you know, kind of exponentialist policies in the Middle East. You know, uh, concessions were made by Washington. Uh, they were interrupted by Israel's Islamist government as a manifestation of American weakness. And what those big words mean is that we have capitulated to Iran so many times that they don't think anything can happen to them, and now things are happening in the world. U.S. diplomacy is viewed as one of retreat. Uh, Iran sees China and Russia as the emerging powers in the region now. Now what has happened is that the Iranian regime has increased its assistance to its proxies, namely Hamas and Hezbollah. And this is not good and is actually a key factor in what Hezbollah has decided to pull off. The next thing we need to do is we need to look at Europe. There are two countries that have so far refused to denounce Hamas's terrorist attack. And obviously, they're our best friends in the whole world, Russia and China. Russia, which receives military support from Iran in its war against that place that we can't talk about that has all the cranes. And uh, Israel is a convenient distraction from its own activities in that place we can't talk about. This diverts a world's attention from its ongoing atrocities against the people of that country. And if you don't believe that's happening, then maybe you need to find another way of finding your information. Now, China, on the other hand, uh, it won't risk its glowing influence uh, in the Arab world by denouncing Hamas. 
So they're going to sit there quietly like they always do. They like to saber rattle and then they're always they're quiet about things that will affect them if they step into uh, the or if they step onto the playing field. Now, here in America, overly political Palestinian shills uh, and they're all Democrats. Um, they're hiding out. These are these are the ones that are, you know they're they're actually running from reporters, uh, and they're not even saying no comment. And the real issue with them particularly is is they like to run their suck when they think everything is going hunky dory for the words that are coming out of their mouth. But when the people that they're supporting are killing babies and women, and basically committing war crimes, atrocities, then they don't know what to do. And they know that if they, if, they, if they speak, they only have two choices. They either speak against what's happening or they speak for what's happening. In either case, they lose because they're politicians. Now, oddly enough, recently, the BLM or Black Lives Matter organization has come out in support of the Palestinians in Gaza. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, they're trying to make it seem as if this is their fight because they have no fight anymore because everybody sees through all of their bullshit. Everybody has seen them for who they are and what they try to do and America isn't having it anymore. Funny enough, yesterday there were protesters in New York City chanting from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Um, I got news for you guys. Palestine is free. It's actually a state. It's a, it's a state in the Middle East. It has legitimacy. It has members in the United Nations. It has a seat at the table. It's as real as real gets as far as country states go. So what are these people talking about? They have no earthly clue. They're just out running their sucks because they think that what they're saying is relevant when in reality it's not. We're going to talk about protests here in a minute, but for the time, let's continue. Now, when these idiots are cornered and asked about the beheading of children, they either lose their shit or they go silent. Now, what's the real threat? I made a video yesterday, uh, and we should take it all very seriously. I'm going to put it somewhere up here for you to watch later. There are over 53,000 special interest aliens that attempted to enter our country illegally. There are over 1.5 million known gotaways. This should be a serious concern as this is the exact tactic used by Hamas on Israel. Now, there are possible dangers this weekend that you need to be paying attention to. You should probably stay away from cities. You should probably be aware that the protesters now have something to protest about. And they're going to get in people's ways. They're going to block streets. They're going to they're going to try and do everything because what Hamas has done uh, is they're they're making this like a soft jihad. They're trying to gain support worldwide. And what they've done is they've asked for all of their supporters to protest on Friday. What does Friday mean to us? I don't know. Is it coordinated? There's no telling. But what is happening is that people are lining up to protest what is happening in the Gaza as if Israel did all of this themselves. Now here's what you should be doing, and I really hate to say this because it's at the top of the list. Arm yourself and be prepared. If you don't already carry, you should probably start carrying where it is legal. If you have a concealed carry permit, you should probably dust that thing off and stop screwing around going, oh, well, it's a good day. I think I'll just go out without it. You should really get your trash together. The time for complacency is over. Train, 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 and seek training if you don't have any. At the minimum, go to the gun range. Fire some rounds off. Work on your accuracy. 
become more familiar with that thing that will likely save your life one day if you have to use it. Prepare your family and focus on increased situational awareness because if you don't do this, your family will become victims if something were to go down. Prepare your home. Do you have a plan to defend your home? What is your plan to defend your home? If you have a plan to defend your home, type the number one in the comments. Continue your basic preps. This is the foundation of our preparedness. Water, food, security. Update your get home or bug out bag. The last thing that you want to do is to be separated from your family if you have to abandon your vehicle on the roadside, if you have to walk away from your place of employment and can't get to your car and know that things are getting bad, you have to have a plan and you have to have the tools necessary to execute that plan. And lastly, you need to stay aware without getting tunnel vision. Do not get sucked into the news cycle. It is information. It is simply data points for you to put together to maintain your situational awareness and prepare yourself and your family for the possibilities that things could go sideways. Now that that little speech is over with, here's what I really want you guys to do. I want you to continue to do the things that you should have been doing all along. I want you to focus your energy on your preparedness. There are things coming down the pike that people won't like. There are things that are coming down the pike that that might be great. Maybe it's football season. Maybe it's Thanksgiving. Maybe it's family gatherings. Maybe it's watching your kid win at the soccer game. But none of that is possible if we do not prepare for the worst case scenario. What I'd like to do is hear from you guys in the comments. What are you thinking? What are your ideas? What are your thoughts on what's happening in the world? Take a few minutes. Put some comments down there. That way we can talk about those later in the upcoming videos. Okay, I think that's going to be about it for right now. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't figured out, this was not a live because my bandwidth still isn't fixed. So from now on, I'm going to be doing these in the morning. I'm going to be sitting there at my keyboard like I am right now, tick, 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 tick talking to you guys. And um, that's the way we're going to roll for a while. If you like what I'm doing, hit that like and subscribe key. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel, there's several links down below. One of my favorite ones is the Amazon store where there's actually some useful prepper items. It's kind of a win-win. I get three cents after you spend a dollar. That kind of thing. All right, guys. Until the next time, stay safe. Have a great day, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. You're still here. Well, since you are, I want to tell you about Prep Stock 2024. It's a year out from now. I will leave a link down below. You guys can figure it out. Right now, the, the website's really basic, but yeah, it's going to be good stuff, guys. It's going to be good stuff. Check it out.